everyone, did you watch the Hulu original movie, The Boston Strangler, yet? If you did, then you might already know that the wildest part of the Boston Strangler crime case has less to do with the murderer and everything to do with the female reporters who broke the story wide open in a time when women were often dismissed, both professionally and as victims of crime. From 1962 to 1965, investigative reporters Loretta McLaughlin, played by Kira Knightley, and Jean Cole, played by Carrie Coon, juggled their personal lives while pursuing a killer story, pun intended. These women took care of their families, got up in the middle of the night to type up their stories, and rarely slept. They were driven by a fierce determination to shine a light on the brutal crimes and hold the authorities accountable for their incompetent investigation. In this video, you'll find out what's true and what's not in the Hulu movie, The Boston Strangler, when it comes to these two fabulous, fierce, and feisty female journalists. Let's begin. The Boston Strangler case is one of the most intriguing and terrifying murder mysteries in American history. For years, investigators tried to unravel the mystery of who the Boston Strangler really was, and whether there was more than one man responsible for the murders of 11, or maybe 13 or more, women in the Boston area. The case became infamous for the gruesome details of the murders and the lack of conclusive evidence over a period of three years, all highlighted by one. Loretta McLaughlin, who, by the way, was not some lowly lifestyle journalist as portrayed in the movie, but rather a seasoned crime reporter. Although it was true that Loretta wrote a number of lifestyle pieces during her time at the paper, I'll cover more of that in just a bit. What was also true in the movie is that Loretta was, in fact, the first journalist in the whole of Boston to link the murders together and that she came up with the penultimate name, the Boston Strangler. Early on, there were a few different monikers such as the Mad Strangler of Boston and the Phantom Fiend or Phantom Strangler. These last two names were a nod to his ability to slip into his victims' homes without breaking in, like some kind of ghostly intruder. But the Boston Strangler reference took hold when Loretta, in partnership with Jean Cole, wrote a five-part series in 1962 that was published in what at that time was known as The Record American. It later became known as the modern-day Boston Herald. She also linked the murders to the twisted mind of Albert DeSalvo, even before his jailhouse confession. It is also true that Loretta had to push her editor to run a story about a series of murders of elderly women in the Boston area, and that the murders were considered inconsequential to everybody but her. What is not true is that Loretta was just emphasis on just a lifestyle reporter, According to a documentary called Boston Strangler Revisited, by the early 1960s, Loretta had already had close to 10 years of local murders under her belt as a reporter at the Record American paper. In the documentary, she was also coined as a fan of mystery stories and considered herself an amateur psychologist, so, heck, why wouldn't she pick up on these seemingly unrelated murders? Loretta was the first to spot a pattern because that is exactly what she was looking for as a sleuth reporter. She found some striking similarities in the first four murders she began investigating that weren't mentioned in the movie, including the fact that all four elderly women wore glasses, they all had some sort of musical interest, and they were all vaguely connected to hospitals. Then, of course, there was the sexual abuse and the decorative bows fashioned from stockings and posing of the bodies that she reported on in the beginning five-part series, that ended up finally convincing people that the murders were connected and that there was indeed a serial killer on the loose in Boston. Also true in the movie was that the editors did bring in another woman reporter to form the two as a team, as more murders kept occurring in the city. Loretta and Jean's reporting sparked controversy both in the newsroom and beyond. Their first major story together, published in January 1963, was headlined Two Girl Reporters Analyze Strangler clearly a title that ignored the women's journalistic achievements, along with the fact that they were two adult women in their 30s. In total, the team of seasoned crime reporters published 29 consecutive articles on the murders, the victims, and the man they deemed fit the profile. Essentially, Loretta was an amateur profiler who really did follow the method of psychological profiling and who really did consult with an expert in the burgeoning field as seen in the film. We're all used to the idea of criminal profiling today, but back in Loretta and Jean's time, not so much. 
And it was true that the authorities were angry at the two women reporters for the level of detail that their articles revealed to the public. It is also true that there were those investigating the murder who rejected the pair's suggestion that one man was responsible for terrorizing the women of the city. What appears not to be true was that it was Loretta and Jean who found out that DeSalvo was released from prison early. In the documentary, Boston Strangler Revisited, retired detective Philip Dianatale claims he was the one who figured that out, and also that he was the one who zeroed in on DeSalvo when he, quote, heard his name, unquote. In other words, Dia Natale does not credit Loretta McLaughlin for providing him or anyone else on the task force with DeSalvo's name. Yet this seems such an important part of the movie that I begin to wonder. To this day, the retired detective is credited with putting together clues indicating that Albert DeSalvo was the Boston Strangler. And to the day he died in 1987, he was sure that DeSalvo was the killer. This is a good time to mention that Detective Conley in the movie is not based on any single real-life individual who worked on the Boston Strangler case, but is instead an amalgamation of some of the detectives who were willing to talk to Loretta McLaughlin and Jean Cole and consider their input as valuable. Another element of the movie that is true is that Loretta and Jean were treated as a stunt to get more readers for the paper. The journalist pictures did accompany their bylines. Whether Loretta was ever in actual danger, or even thought that she was in danger is not verified. As for finding out more about who Jean Cole really was to get her side of the story, well, that has been difficult. I think it is too bad that neither she or Loretta McLaughlin wrote their own book about that time in history. Others did write books, including newspaper man Gerald Frank, who wrote The Boston Strangler, which was adapted into the 1968 film of the same name starring Tony Curtis. Plus, there's the book by Sally Kelly that contends that the Boston Stranglings in the early 60s were the work of at least eight murderers. Not the single man convicted, Albert DeSalvo, who she says was manipulated into confessing by authorities involved in the case. Albert DeSalvo admitted to killing Mary Sullivan and 10 other women in the Boston area between 1962 and 1964, but later recanted. He was later killed in prison. In 2013, Massachusetts Attorney General Martha Coakley said that the results of DNA tests conducted that year, and I quote, leave no doubt that Albert DeSalvo was responsible for the brutal murder of Mary Sullivan, and it was most likely that he also was the Boston Strangler. Authorities said at that time that new technology allowed them to test semen left at the crime scene of Sullivan's death using DNA from a living relative of DeSalvo's. That produced a match with DeSalvo that excluded 99.9% .9 of other suspects. The Hulu movie, Boston Strangler, got a lot right about the two so-called girl reporters who not only broke the story of the killings of so many women in Boston in 1960s America, but who persevered even in the face of the misogynist attitudes of the time. I don't know about you, but I think it's time that these fabulous, fierce, and feisty women were given the credit due to them and that their stories are finally told. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and why not catch another one of my videos right here?